The Ford Fiesta has been Britain's best-selling car for seven consecutive years, but now Skoda thinks it's got a model ready to challenge it for the best in class. Here it is, it's the new Fabia. To find out which one is better, we are going to assess both cars in a number of key areas, starting with how much space they've got. Now we're going to start with the Ford Fiesta, and I have to confess this particular car I know very well because it's been my long-term test car for the last six months. And I have to say, having a small family, it's ever so slightly too small for somebody with a small family. Uh, take our baby buggy here, neatly folded. It doesn't actually go in flat, which means if you're going for a weekend away or something, you're forever taking wheels on and off. The Skoda has got 330 litres of space to the Fiesta's 290. It's actually about the same size as the Ford Focus's boot. It's the same story in the back seats. The Fiesta is fine, but it's the Skoda that gives occupants slightly more space. Next, we move on to driving position and dashboard design. We're in the Fiesta and I have to say driving position, spot on. This is a ZTEC spec car, which is our recommended spec. And we've got reach and height adjustment on the steering wheel and also height adjustment on the seat. In terms of specifications, ZTEC gives you USB connection for your iPhone. You've got Bluetooth for your phone and air conditioning. Um, I have to say though, while these heater controls are really nice and clear and simple to use, the buttons up here for the entertainment system are a bit fiddly. Next, we move on to the Skoda. And first thing to note, you get the reach and height adjustment just like in the Fiesta. This is an SE spec car. Um, the other thing you'll notice is it feels a lot like a Volkswagen in here. And that's not surprising because Volkswagen actually owns Skoda these days. Uh, like the Fiesta, lots of storage, good clear heating controls. Where this jumps ahead is in this touchscreen. This, all models get a five inch one. This is actually six and a half inch, this touchscreen. And it's very responsive. It looks very smart. And while the overall sort of feel in here is rather sober compared with the Fiesta, it actually feels a bit classier as well. It feels more modern. Um, so really for interior, the Skoda edges ahead. Where this Fabia needs to shine if it's in with a chance of beating the Fiesta is in how enjoyable it is to drive. Today we're testing the 1.2 petrol engine, which we rate as the best for the Fabia. And coincidentally, it's also closest in terms of price and performance to the engine that we rate as the best in the Fiesta, the one litre EcoBoost. The first thing to note is that the four cylinder engine in the Skoda is quieter than the Ford's three cylinder. However, both provide easy acceleration, defying their tiny capacities. This gearbox is nice and light to use. In fact, all the controls are really effortless. Visibility is excellent. The ride is amazingly comfortable, I have to say. And all in all, this is going to be a car that is very easy to drive in town, in traffic, on long journeys. No problem at all. If there's a drawback, it's that it's not particularly engaging, although I do appreciate that is not the top of everybody's priorities. OK, we jumped into the Fiesta and, you know, it immediately feels more responsive. I mentioned earlier about how the Skoda's engine was quieter, but actually the Fiesta's three cylinder unit makes such a lovely thrummy noise that it's a pleasure to listen to. As you can see, the ride's not quite as good. My cameraman's bouncing about in the passenger seat, but the controls are so responsive. The steering and the clutch and the gearbox are so nicely weighted that they make the Fiesta a pleasure to drive. The main downside with the Fiesta is that hard ride that we've already mentioned. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not unbearable, but it does mean that over long distances or bumpy roads, the Fiesta is just not quite so composed as the Fabia. Now for some, and I include myself in this, that actually makes the Fiesta more fun to drive. It makes it feel more involving, but others I concede will prefer the softer approach of the Skoda. So the Fabia has a bigger interior and it's better on a long journey, whereas the Fiesta is more fun to drive. It's looking pretty close, I think you'll agree, but can we split them on affordability? The Skoda costs from £10,600, but for the model we recommend, which is the 1.2 turbo petrol in SE spec, it's £13,400. Now that's about £600 cheaper on a model for model basis than you'll pay for a Fiesta. However, because the Ford has been around for so much longer, you can actually haggle a much bigger discount. Look at servicing and insurance costs and it's no easier to separate the two cars. 
Where the Skoda does edge ahead, however, is in fuel economy, because although both cars manage about 60 mpg in official fuel tests, it's much easier to obtain those sorts of high figures from the Fabia than it is from the Fiesta. These are small differences, but they do add up to a package that, unless you really value the Fiesta's driving thrills, is going to be more appealing to more people. Do you know, it's taken a while, but I think the Ford has finally been beaten. Do you agree? Tell us in the comments section below. And once you've done that, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking up here, and you can read detailed reviews of the Fiesta and the Fabia on the Telegraph Cars website by clicking up here.